Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to church this morning. Great to see so many of you signing in already. Please, please, please do sign in, say hi. We've got loads of people already. The Holmeses, the Harrises, Michelle, good morning. Lynn and Pete. Hi Alice. David, David and Heather. Joe and Ian over in Perrampore. Rosie and Philip. Got the Coles signing in. Graham, John and Sal. How you doing? Okay. Gwyn and Steve. Chalamutus are here this morning. Keep signing in. Mount Joys are with us. Aaron and Murray, Phelpses. Hi John, hi Liz, hi Josh, how you doing? Hi Mum, good morning. Pete and Maggie. Sorry, we're just getting volumes and things sorted out at our end here. Welcome everybody. Keep signing in. Dave and Lizzie from up in Scotland. Really good to have you with us this morning. Morning, Sarah. Linda and Tony. Hi, Helen and Malcolm. Alison. Morning to the Cutlers. Hi, Ellie. How are you guys doing? Hope you're okay. Morning, Eta. Paul and Lynn with us. Garbicans are here. Good morning, guys. Morning, Dave. Morning, Lydia. Keep signing in, guys. So good to uh, see all the different names signing in. Got people coming in from all over the country again. Our friends in Scotland are with us. Dave and Lizzie, I hope you're doing okay. What's the weather doing up there? Is it snowing this week? Morning, Claire. Morning, Pat. Izzy and Andrew, nice of you to join us this morning. Hope you're doing okay, guys. Keep signing in. I'm going to start in a few moments. We're at our house this morning. Guys are going to be leading us in worship. One or two more minutes and we're going to start signing in. We're going to start our, our service together. Oh, 
Welcome everybody. Good morning to our live stream this morning. It's so brilliant to have so many signed in. I just want to say we've got people signing in from all over the world this morning. Sushma, who came to the church a long, long time ago, signed in. Sushma, hi. I hope you're doing okay. Really, really welcome. Everybody say hello to Sushma. Do you know, I'm not quite sure where in the world you are these days, but I know it's a long way off. So welcome. Really good for you to connect with us this morning. There's more people signing in. And, uh, you know, just do look out for who's signing in. If you want to just say them, send them a quick note to say hi, that would be fantastic. Okay? Um, do keep the comments coming. I think it's such an important part, as I say this every week, but it's such an important part of our time together is that you're inputting into what is happening, into the worship, into the prayers, into the words uh, that, that I or whoever might be sharing. So uh, do keep sign, um, using the live stream. It is such an important part of what we're doing. This week we're going to be looking at Psalm 23 and it's part of our sort of lockdown letter church reading that everyone's doing and we're using the psalm on the Sunday and today's is Psalm 23 and I really feel the Lord wants to speak to us through this this morning. I think he's confirmed it and underlined it in so many ways so I'm going to talk about that a little bit later but what, what we've, we've done or, or Linda's done is sent out um, different parts of the psalm. Uh, to uh, lots of different people involved with the children and families and people involved in our children's ministry and we've put this edit together just to introduce this psalm for you today but but as you listen and as you look just pray Lord what do you want to say to me through this psalm today so Mark if you could run that that would be fantastic And I shall not want Lord, you are my shepherd And I shall not want You make me lie down In green pastures Restore my soul, Lord, you are my shepherd, and I shall not want. Lord, you are my shepherd, and I shall not want. To lead me beside quiet waters, you restore my soul. You lead me in the paths of righteousness, you lead me in the paths of righteousness. For your name's sake, for your name's sake, Lord, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, of my enemies thank you Jesus you prepare a table before 
before me In the presence of mine enemies In the presence of mine enemies, Lord And you anoint my head with oil It's you anoint my head with oil The oil of your Holy Spirit, Lord You anoint my head with oil You anoint my head with oil The oil of your Holy Spirit Let it overflow Let it overflow tonight, Lord and Surely goodness and mercy Will follow me all the days of my life Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. Days of my life. And I will dwell in your house forevermore. Jesus, I will dwell in your house forever, forever, Lord, where there's joy forever, forevermore, forevermore. You are my shepherd. Jesus, you're the good shepherd. so good wasn't it just thank you to everyone who who took part in that it's so good to see so many of our children and families and and, and just folks from our church's faces and taking right. part in that so, so and, and uh, uh, yeah. yeah brilliant i remember i was watching that earlier in the week and it did bring a tear to my eye so uh, yeah. anyway we're going to keep that psalm 23 as a focus not just for this week but for next week but i'm just going to read it to you and it'll be on the screen, but I'd really encourage you to take your Bibles in hand, maybe bring it up on your phones or, or tablets or whatever, and just have this before you today. And again, just ask the Lord, what does he want to say through these, these, these amazing words today? So Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul guides me along the paths of, for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord.
this morning is that uh, that overwhelming that overwhelming love of God which has come upon us that we would know it deep deep down within our souls and that psalm says about being our souls being refreshed if there's one thing that's going to refresh our souls it's his love isn't it and what it says in his word is that he's going to lavish his love upon us so just for a moment just say, Lord, I, I need your love this morning. I need to know it deep, deep down. I need my soul to be refreshed. So we just say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Let us be overwhelmed by the amazing love. We see it in Jesus, don't we? Gave his son for us so that we didn't have to be distant and separate from him that we could be in the relationship we're created for he gave his son for us he gave his son for you and for me isn't that those, the most amazing thing praise you this morning Lord. we thank you that because of your great love you sent your son our Lord Jesus Christ to live to die to rise to ascend into heaven poured out your spirit, the spirit that testifies to our spirits that we are children of God. Amazing love. So deep. So wide. So high. So long. We just want to know it this morning, don't we? We want to bask in it. Lord, in response to your great love for us, we in turn express our love to you. Yes, with songs, but we express it in 
in, in, in lives laid down. Lord, you're interested in every aspect, every part of our lives. You want to see us lay them down before you. So we bring you our words, but we bring you our actions. We bring you our hearts. We bring you our work. We bring you our finances. We bring you, Lord, every aspect, every part of our lives. We just lay them before you and we say, Lord, we want to express our love for you in each and every part of who we are. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We, um, we've got a few things coming up this week that are, are, are slightly different to usual. Today, well, we thought we'd try something, okay? Um, I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. So after the service, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the church's Zoom account. If anyone wants to Zoom in and uh, just have a chat, have a cup of coffee, uh, bring your coffee with you, of course, <laughs> we're, we're going to try and do that after the service. So 10 minutes after the live stream finished today, we're going to start up the live, the, the, the Zoom feed um, the, the, all the details are on the screen. Yeah, the details are on the screen. Sorry, I can't see the screen. It's behind me. But <laughs> the details are on the screen. So scribble it down and zoom in if you want to just catch up and chat. It'd be lovely to see you if you, if you were able to do that. So uh, we'll get that going about 10 minutes after the live stream finishes today. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to um, open up a little, little, little Zoom chat on Thursday from 6 till 6.30. Um, we're conscious that people are, are, are watching from all over the place, people that aren't normally part of our church family, and we just wanted to give you the opportunity, if that's you, to zoom in, to meet us, uh, get to know the couple of members of the staff team here uh, zooming in on this. So again, the details are on the screen. Scribble it down, join us on Thursday morning. It's an opportunity for you to get to know us a little bit, for us to tell you a little bit about the church, and what we're about, kind of what we look like in normal days, and a little bit about what we look like in these days as well, where it is a little bit unusual. So that's on Thursday at, um, at 6 till 6.30. So if that's you, it'd be lovely, lovely to, to meet you, to get to know you a little bit, and for you, hopefully, to get to know us a bit. Tomorrow evening at 7, we're going to have just a church family gathering. We just want to get folks together a little bit. We're going to give you a little bit of an update on where we're at, uh, maybe a little bit of an update of where we're, we're seeing things going in the next few weeks as things unfold with regards to the lockdown and things like that. So zoom in from 7 till 8 o'clock. We're going to keep it to the hour. And again, it's just an opportunity to give you an update. There's a few important things that we do need to just bring you up to speed on as we go forward from this time. Bible study on Wednesday. I think we're going to look at Psalm 23. So if you're going to, excuse me, if you're going to zoom in on Wednesday... 7.30 to the Bible study, and um, please come ready to share on Psalm 23. These are familiar words, but they're deep and they are rich. So come ready to share, to bless, to encourage, and to pray with one another into and about these words. Okay, that's Wednesday. And then Thursday morning, we are going to be praying at 7 o'clock for our prayer breakfast, 7 till 8. Do again, join in. We'll get the details out to you um, through the church email um, if you want to join in on that Zoom prayer meeting. Um, Pentecost is, is, is coming up soon and uh, you know this time when we, we, we celebrate the, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit all those years ago. But what, what we want to do is, is, is we want to pray ahead of our Pentecost um, live stream gathering on uh, I think it's the 31st of May. Okay so what we're going to do is we're setting um, a 24 hour period aside. So 10 a.m. Saturday morning on the 30th to 10 a.m. when we start our live stream on the Sunday on the Sunday morning on Pentecost Sunday. And we want to pray and we want to pray that we would know the coming of God's Holy Spirit in a new, a fresh and a powerful way. We're, we're, we're thinking in our sort of corporate sort of church reading plan that we do, we've been doing about those first four chapters of Acts. And, and in chapter four, it talks about a prayer meeting. It says, after they prayed, the room was shaken and they were filled with boldness. I want, to, I want us to come at this time of praying with that level of expectancy, that level of, 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 of kind of 
you know, we, we really are expecting to see God move because that's what happens when we pray. He does move. It does make a difference. So we're going to set that time aside. And then in the evening of Pentecost Sunday, there's a county wide prayer gathering happening. It's being organised from some guys up in, in Exeter. There was one a few weeks ago, a couple of thousand people connected with this prayer meeting. And we're going to be involved in that. We're going to, I'm going to be leading a part of the, the, the prayers for Cornwall um, from out in my shed <laughs> in the garden. But uh, we'll get the details out to you. It'd be good if we as a church could really get behind this and, and, and gather with folks from across our region praying for the outpouring of, your, of the Holy Spirit. We so need that, don't we? We so need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Do you need it? Do you need it? Just, just today, just before God say, yeah, Lord, I need that fresh touch. I need the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. As we, as we open up the word of God together, I say, come, Holy Spirit, touch us afresh, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be looking at Psalm 23, as I've said, for a couple of Sundays. Uh, Linda's going to be unpacking the latter part next week. And, and I've just got one, one verse, really, I want to kind of focus on and make the you know, sort of big part of what I want to say today. Um, so Psalm 23, if you want to get your Bibles, get it in front of you. It's good to have it there. I know probably we could have it on the screen, but, but it's good to have it in front of you. Good to have it in your, in your hands. This is the psalm, as I've said, for today as part of our kind of general reading. We put a reading plan together for the church through this time. Uh, uh, and we're using a psalm each Sunday. OK, and today's psalm is Psalm 23. And, and it, it's, it's really interesting that this has been coming up in so many different parts of things I've been watching and listening and reading over the past week. Uh, uh, Jem's been doing a thought for the day and he talked about the Lord is our shepherd. I think it was on Thursday or Friday, I can't remember now. And I was listening to the, the, the Elim Leaders Summit. It's great, all these things are online. You can just, you can just tap in and uh, enjoy different bits. And Elim Leaders Summit, it was Malcolm Duncan. An excellent talk. And uh, he again was talking about Psalm 23. I also have preached from this passage at two funerals recently and it's often a passage that is read on occasions such as those and I started those sermons those the, the, those those times by asking those people present this question what is God like what is God like I wonder and actually I really believe that that is a question on people's lips and on their minds a lot at the moment you know we heard recently how 40 percent of people in the population apparently are praying uh, 25 percent are zooming in are, are, are connecting with li um, live stream uh, or services online and i'm sure the question that many are asking is what is this god like and what i believe is that this psalm starts with the answer or part of the answer to the question what is god like david starts his psalm by saying the lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd. David, I think, is using his experiences as a shepherd on the hillside. I guess he was a king when he was writing this, but he started off as that shepherd on the hillside, remember? And I think he's using his experiences as a shepherd to shape what he believes and understands God to be like. He's like a shepherd leading, protecting, providing for his sheep healing them, helping them. The adjectives could go on and on and on. These words describing what God is like by using this picture of the shepherd on the hillside. I want you to do something for me this morning. Because I think there's a really important little word that we can overlook in this phrase. I want you to say this phrase. I want you to say it out loud where you are. Again, it might be a bit weird if you've got family around you. If you're on your own, it's much, much easier. Wendy in the garden, out three milestones, she's just mentioned that she's singing really loudly. Wendy, we want you to belt it out in your garden, please. <laughs> okay, I want you to say this, folks. I want you to say, the Lord is my shepherd. That's what David says. That's what we can say. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's say it together now. The Lord is my shepherd. And what I pray is that as we look at this psalm together, as we meditate on it through the week, as we come back to it next Sunday uh, morning, that, 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 that the truth of who God is, the good shepherd, would really change us and touch us deep 
deep down and say, come Holy Spirit, show us, reveal to us what God is like, the good shepherd. He's good all the time. And that's such an important message in these days, that, 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 that are difficult days in many ways, but we can't lose sight of the goodness of God, the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it and keep saying it. Linda's going to look at the next part of the psalm, the later part of the psalm next week. But today I just want to look at one verse and I feel that the Lord, the Lord has given me this to share today. We, weren't, we were going to do it very differently and I just felt that prompting of the Holy Spirit to say, no, we've got to look at this one phrase, verse 4. And it's a difficult phrase. It's a difficult phrase, but it's very pertinent to the times that we are living in. It says there in verse four, even though I walk through the darkest valley. Some of the Bibles will say the valley of the shadow of death. It says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Let me say that again. Let me read it again. Even though I walk through the, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, I, I'm not going to unpack that. There's a, there's a very good sermon by one of our preachers at church called Angela Noble. <laughs> that if you go into the, um, listen again, I can't remember the date, but it's a, a while ago now. A very good sermon about this very, very phrase. I just want to make two comments. And they're two comments born out of experiences that I've been, you know, I've had uh, reflections or thoughts over the previous past few days or weeks. But each help us to understand and know this loving God, the good shepherd and his care for us. And it's not just for, for these difficult days that we're in at the moment. This is for all of our lives. Firstly, I want to say this a couple of weeks ago. Mark, could you put that slide up for me, that picture? A couple of weeks ago, um, I... I sat on a bench. Um, if you go out from our house, you go through the woods and there's some lovely um, sort of fields with pathways through them. There's a, there's a stone bench in one of them. And you get this amazing view. You can see it on the screen now. This amazing view of Truro. And uh, you can't really see it. But as I sat there and as I was thinking and praying about what, what, what the Lord was saying to me at this time, I, I noticed the cemetery, the city cemetery. And I'd never noticed this before. But my, my eye was drawn to it and I realised that actually from this view of the city, the cemetery is almost at the highest point. And this place of death is overshadowing the whole of the city. I think we're feeling this kind of now, aren't we? This sense of we're, we're walking in the valley of the shadow of death. We feel it. When we turn the television on each day at half past four, five o'clock or whatever it is, and we have to listen to, or we don't have to, but we're, we're listening to these, these reports of how many people have died. We're remembering that each one of those people is a life, an individual, loved and created by God, not a number. Each, each person would be part of a family. So, so, we recognise that we're really walking in the reality of this psalm in many ways right now. But I want to I just kind of reflect on this a little bit. I, I sat with somebody recently who had been, and this is somebody none of you would know, but, but somebody who had been given the most devastating news about their health. The person was scared. And they were asking me, Matt, What's going to happen when I die? What's, what's going to be? What's, what's it going to be like? What? And, and we had this most amazing conversation, me and this person. They were looking for some kind of, kind of assurance. I said to them, I said, have you trusted in Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour? They said, oh yes, Matt, I have. I said, have you asked forgiveness for the things that you've done wrong in your life? And they said, oh, yes, Matt, I have. I said, have you invited God by his Holy Spirit to come and live and dwell within you and for you to seek and serve and live for him? Yes, Matt, I have. And I was able in that moment 
to talk to this person about the assurance that, 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 that the Bible gives us that we can have for what lies beyond the grave when we have put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and his saving work, what he has done for us. And it was an amazing moment to journey with this person to a place of fear. And although it was still difficult, they were still frightened to a place of assurance that they believed whatever happened, God was with them. And, and, and beyond the grave, he would be with they, that, that, that person would be with him, with God, with Christ. And it was the most amazing moment as, as I saw God at work, this person walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but finding light in the midst of it. Isn't that most amazing thing? Here's the truth for those who have put their trust in Christ. We can be sure of this. The Bible tells us so. That if we believe in him, if we trust in him, if we proclaim him as Lord over our lives, if we accept what he has done for us in Christ, seeking his forgiveness, accepting and, and asking for his Holy Spirit to come and live and dwell within us, death is not the end. Death is not the end. It's a step into an eternity where we will be with him and he will be with us in the most amazing way. That's the truth, I believe. And though we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, this is not going to go away. We know that this death is going to, we, we all face it one day. I, I, I read this week, this passage, it said the last enemy to be destroyed is death. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 15. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the reality. We are always going to be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But when we put our trust in Christ, we can have assurance that death is not the end. But, but, and this is really important. And this is the first thing I wanted to say about this, this passage from, from Psalm 23. That is the reality for us all. But you know, Jesus makes a difference in our dying, yes. But at the same time, he came to give us life and life in all its fullness. So we want that life to begin now, don't we? And again, by his spirit, he offers us that, 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 that opportunity to live in the fullness of life. I, I confess, this week I was getting overwhelmed by it all. I was, I was watching all the news and every day there was a different part of cultural society that they were featuring that were struggling with the outcome of this coronavirus. It was driving instructors one day. I hadn't even thought about this. They can't earn a living. They can't, they can't do their job because of social distancing. And it was, it was this one guy, it was disastrous for him. And then there were all these different groups every day that we've been hearing about. And I started, I confess, to get a bit despondent about this, to feel a bit overwhelmed by it. I started to feel like I was walking in the valley of the shadow of death. And then yesterday, I had to go and get a bit of, a, bit of, bit of kit from Mark and Hannah's for today. So I thought, I know I'll walk over. And I put my headphones on and I, and I put my Spotify um, daily mix on lots of different worship songs and the song came up that we are about to sing uh, in response to this time uh, together this, this morning and it's the song I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah um, can I grab it here with a sec Dan and as I walked along I started in my spirit to raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. And then it goes, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I love that. Hope for up from the ashes. Hope for, will arise. We were praying into that this morning at our pre-service meeting, our prayer meeting. We were praying into that. Hope coming for those who are mourning. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside me. As I walked along, 
I raised a hallelujah. I started to praise and I started to worship and I started to, a, a, a joy started to well up in me. And then it, it spilled into tears. As I, as I, at times I was weeping over situations. But as I walked and as I prayed, what people must have thought, I don't know. <laughs> but as I walked and as I prayed, a song welled up inside of me. And, 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 and what was despondency, what was it felt like I was walking through that valley? It was almost like I, I, I encountered and experienced the presence of God and a peace was restored to my heart. I think, folks, we've got to do this. We've got to keep praying and praising and worshipping. We've got to keep taking hold of, 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 of his peace because that's the gift that is, is, is on offer to us. That's a gift of the spirit, the spirit that is within us. And, and even if, in the face of all this, you've just got a tiny bit of faith to take hold of this for you. It might seem like a real struggle, but even if you've just got a tiny bit of faith, do you know what the Lord says? That's enough. It's a starting point. Take hold of it. Take hold of it. I, I, I'm, we're going to have a, a, a little um, clip that Dan Mountjoy has put together. Dan, thank you for doing this. It just warmed my heart this, this week as I, as I received this. But this is Dan doing what we're talking about today, walking through the valley of the shadow of, the day, of death and finding God in the midst of it and being raised and lifted. So we're going to run that now. Hello you lot, I miss going to church with you all, miss being church with you all. I know that things at the moment are very hard for many of us and a great many people are struggling. So it's right that in the midst of all this we focus on joy. It's right that we seek joy and we try to find joy in our new every day. That's what I aim for. Most of the time I grasp it, most of the times I get it, but sometimes I ask my wife and she'll tell you that the wheels come off that wagon. Sometimes my joy slips, but my hope, my hope never has. So I want to share with you a testimony of hope in the midst of a pandemic and a reminder that God's promises aren't paused just because the world is. So most of you know Mel and me, you know our chaotic kids very well. We're, we're all family, aren't we? Um, you've ministered to us, you've fervently prayed for us, you've supported us, you've done life with us. And we're so thankful for you guys. You know our story, you know the catastrophic start our marriage had, so I won't go into all the details of that but one of the repercussions of that hellish maelstrom was that we got into debt or rather I got into debt I was unemployed I was depressed I was emasculated if there is such a thing I was struggling to make the ends meet I began making detrimental decisions financially not paying some bills some months and not paying others in different months robbing Peter to pay Paul Mel tried to ease some of the burden with loans and credit cards and catalogues just so we could live but the debt spiralled and so did the descent of, of my mental well-being. I hid the truth from Mel, just like I hid the letters behind the fridge, straight in the bin, in my backpack, in the little cabinet under the car seat. And I hid the truth from you all. I was going to church, I was you know, leading groups, I was helping to lead events. All the while this burden was kind of ruining me and robbing me of my peace and robbing my wife of her husband. Some of you saw through that facade, I know you did. But I continued in the same spirit that made the mess. That I'm a man and I can fix this in my own strength. And of course I can. Of course I couldn't. So it all came to a head on a fateful Sunday evening. I was at Refresh, kind of leading that event. One or two minutes before the, it kicked off, um, I received a text from Mel saying something like this. There's a bailiff at the door. He wants £700. He promised me you were paying the council tax. That was the catalyst for getting help. So we've had many letters over the years and, and many, many bailiffs at our door. We've paid them all off with borrowed money and I'd sweep it under the rug. Well, that night, some choice words were levelled at me and I deserved them all and I broke and it all spewed out. That week, we sought help. We went and we met with Natalie, who heads up CAP, Christians Against Poverty, down here, and we went for it. We set a budget, 
we had a repayment plan put in place and the stress and the anxiety and, and everything in here and all the piles of mess that I've made started to alleviate. I tell you this and I'm, and I'm feeling very vulnerable as I do so because I want to tell you that last week, two and a bit years down the line from first seeking help with CAP and nearly a decade down the line from first digging that hole and in the middle of a national crisis, we were declared debt free. The promises that God had made for us had not been forgotten. And although my joy slipped many, many times, when I finally accepted help from God and from Cap, from then on, my hope never could slip. I had to hope. If I didn't hope, what else did I have? So what I've learned is that our hope is neither shallow nor brittle. It's not some wishy-washy thing. It's not some pie in the sky. It's not a motivational quote on a picture of a sunset somewhere or a cheesy hallmark card to make your bad days feel better. Our hope is heavy and solid and tangible and we can hold it. It's the hope that God who created everything that exists out of everything that exists is putting his finger in the melting pot of life and making things right. Our hope has always been a story of reconciliation and redemption and God does not renege on that vow now. The response to COVID-19 is not the only pie God has his hand in. This pandemic is not the sole concern of Jesus and this lack, this lack is not the only stream the Holy Spirit flows in. God is making all things new. So in Hebrews, best of the New Testament letters, by the way, says this. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls, and it leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. You see, I am at peace because years later, I've been led by the Holy Spirit's hand to the inner sanctuary of God, alongside Jesus who struggled with me in my struggle. Mercifully, the mistakes and the chaos that I created in the madness of my fractured reasoning and my claustrophobic circumstance have all been tossed aside. I've had to hope that he could make things right because I had nothing else to cling to at the end of my tether. If I hadn't broken that night and if I hadn't sought help through Cap, who are anointed by God, by the way, and, and incredible, I dread to think what I would have done or where I would be right now. So in the midst of this uncertainty, God proved to the Mount Joyce that his faithfulness is great and it is never ending. Have hope. Have hope. Wow. Just thank you, Dan, Mel, the girls and Max. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for, for taking that step, putting yourself in that vulnerable place, because actually what we're seeing in, in, in what you're saying is that what we've read today is true, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You've known the touch of the good shepherd. You've known his leading and his, and, and his guiding. If, if we were together, Dan, we'd have you up as a family and we would be applauding, uh, thanking God with you uh, for what he has done in your lives. So what I want us to do, church, is I want us in this moment to, to in our minds, hold out a hand and we're going to pray for our, our dear friends, this, this lovely family, part of our church family, the Mount Joyce. So Lord Father, we celebrate with Dan and with Mel today that they are debt free. We celebrate with them today that you are their good shepherd and that your hand has been upon their lives, leading and guiding them. And right now we reach out a hand and we pray blessing on them. And we pray that they would know just more of who you are more of your provision, more of your strength, more of your peace, more of your blessing, more of your power at work within them. We thank you, Lord, for the, for the sacrifice of, of doing what Dan's done today, stepping out in faith for that family 
And Lord, we know that when, when, when people step out in faith, when they make those sacrifices, we know that fire falls. So we just pray the fire of God fall upon that family, upon that home today. And Lord, what you have begun, would you carry it on to continue, to, you know, to its completion. Just keep working with them. Thank you for the blessing that they are to us. Thank you for the encouragement that they are to us. We bless them now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We, we're going to sing that song to finish in a few moments. But before we do, I want us to pray. And I want us to pray uh, for, for those folks or for situations where it's a sense of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Maybe in these moments you're just praying for yourself. You're feeling it really acutely. And in those moments, at these moments, just pray that the Holy Spirit will come and you would know the Lord's presence. You would know his rod and his staff guiding and helping and protecting. So let's just pray. If you want to write prayers on the live stream, then, then just start writing now. If there's situations and circumstances you want to, want to bring up, remember sort of confidentiality. This does go live. Um, this is put on our Facebook and on our, our website so, so, so the world will see it. So if you could keep it uh, sort of confidential, but, but maybe just situations, circumstances we want us to pray for. It doesn't have to be specifics. It can be general ones. I'm conscious today. I heard on the news this week it's Rogation Sunday and uh, apparently this is the day uh, in the calendar of the church that we, we remember our, uh, a bit like harvest really. We remember farmers. Uh, our farmers are up against it, aren't they? That, 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 that there are many that you know, have been producing food for, for markets that just aren't there anymore. So I know I'm, John, I'm sure John and uh, Berryman would, would fill us in on some of the pressures that farmers are facing. But I want to lift them up to you today. Farmers who are up against it because of just the, the, the changing face of the markets at the moment. It was tough enough before all this and it's just getting tougher. So Lord, we pray for our farmers. We pray for those people who, who, who produce the food for us to enjoy. And we pray, Lord, that there would be innovative and creative ways of using produce and, and, and you know, what's being produced. produced. And I pray protection, Lord. That these places, they, these people, they wouldn't, wouldn't go to the wall because of this. I've just seen a note there from John. There's lots of debt. So we pray for provision. Pray for government input and help. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. So if there's anyone else uh, who wants to just lead us in prayer, just start typing in, guys. We're going to pray together. These are so, such important moments in our live stream. Because again, we pray, we pray, and we know that the, the prayer of a powerful a person, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Father, we lift up those who know, um, who, we know who feel that, that suicide is their only option. Lord, we pray for your solid hope in the midst of their situations. And Lord, we declare that the spirit of death would be bound. That spirit that, that comes against people and causes them to think this way. To take their own lives, to harm themselves. Lord, we pray that it would be bound. And people who are experiencing that would know freedom now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, we pray for Nancy today. Tony and Linda, if you're with Nancy, would you, this is Tony's mum, would you lay a hand on her? 94 today. And we just want to pray a, a, a blessing of God upon you, Nancy. The peace of God into your heart and into your mind and into your, 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 your life in these days. We pray blessing in the name of Jesus. And uh, Tony's asked us to pray rightly so for older people who are struggling in these days. Keep them safe. Give them peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, Lord, we pray for you, Claire. Again, we just reach out our hand and we just pray peace of mind upon you. Peace of mind. The peace of Christ upon you now, Claire. Remember, remember what we read. That uh, we're walking through those dark places. He is with us. He is with us. Pray for each person that needs to make a decision about education over the coming few weeks. This is massive. From government to trust leads to teachers 
staff and parents. You know, we pray for the whole situation with, 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 with education. Uh, this is massive. It's hard to know what to pray. We just pray wisdom. Wisdom over each of those people Karen has mentioned. Holy Spirit, help. Guide. Let this be done right. Let this be done safely. Pray that in Jesus' name. Yeah, Sharon's asked us to pray for Ginny. Ginny is still not well. Again, we just reach out our hands, Ginny, uh, towards you. Maybe if, if I don't know if Paul... Paul and Grace are there, but if they are, lay a hand on Ginny now. And we just pray in the name of Jesus that this sickness should go. We command it to go in Jesus' name and we pray peace upon you. Pray that you would know the grace of God upon you in the most just precious and tangible way. Healing now in Jesus' name. Amen. And we've got Alison ask us to pray for her 93-year-old Christian aunt who has had to go in a hospital tomorrow for an injection in her eye. We just pray, just pray that uh, she, th th this, this condition would not deteriorate further. Pray that she would know protection from any infection. And give her strength. Yeah, we're standing with you and we pray with you, Alison, for your aunt. Her name is Layla. Yeah, Lord, we pray with Linda for those who have lost someone in their family over recent weeks and can't be hugged and comforted by family or friends because of lockdown. This is a really tough one. And do Lord, Lord, we pray. We've got friends we know, people we know, but we just long to go and hug. And, and, and others will, will, will know that soon. I just pray, Lord, intervene there. Draw near to those who mourn. That's what you say in your word. Yeah, we just got Pete, Lynn, Lynn put up earlier. Pete's got to go in the hospital. He's got to have a little test this week. Lord, we, we pray for Pete Howlett. We just pray peace and healing and protection on him as he goes into the hospital this week. We're freedom from this. But we pray for those who are, who are caring, who are carers for family members and have lost support networks. Yeah. Especially we pray for those caring for someone with dementia who does not understand what is going on, I pray that support and respite would be somehow made available. This is, again, a massive thing we're praying for today. This is huge. People with dementia not understanding uh, people coming in with PPE and all that. So, Lord, we pray blessing on them. We pray blessing on them in Jesus' name. Help them. Help the families, Lord. Give them strength. Yeah, my mum's just saying, we pray for teachers and schools. We just lift them up to you. Okay, Alice has asked us to pray for the staff of, of her school to make the right decision and to, to, to look to you, Lord, in this, to see your hand. Again, Alice, if you'd be with us, we'd be laying hands on you. So just lay a hand on your heart, Alice, and we're stretching out our hands. We pray for you in these days. Wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that Alice would just rest uh, in you in these days, that she would know that you, you've got this. You've got this. Help her in Jesus' name. Yeah, Mary's asked to pray protection as nations return to work. God would hold back any further infection. Yeah, we do. We're standing again against any second wave. We, 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 we've stood and we've prayed uh, against the first wave. We, we pray for uh, against any second wave in our nation at this time. Pray in the name of Jesus. Let this come to an end. is written here death is, is a thief and fear is a liar thank you Jesus you have overcome everything and that you will occur that you've that you've overcome everything that will come against us in you there is victory and you make us overcomers and we say yes and amen to that today we say yes and amen and going on Barney said we pray for the mental health of all the key workers yeah we do. We pray for those situations you're aware of too, Van, and we just pray peace, peace, peace in the name of Christ. Pray for the isolated and the, and the alone, yes. Hard to imagine. So we just pray, Lord, be near to those who are lonely. Yeah, 
and we thank you for our doctors. And we're going we're gonna to agree with Dan in his prayers here. We pray for CAP. We give thanks for them and for the work that they do. We pray that their work isn't uh, hindered in the current climate and that people who need it would seek their help. Thank you for Christians Against Poverty. Amen. We pray for this organisation. Lord, let it prosper. Let it prosper in these days where the expectation is that things would be shrinking back. Lord, let it grow. Let it prosper. Lord, I pray for, for, for uh, streams of funding to allow this work to continue. Pray that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right, we're gonna we're gonna continue, um, and the guys are gonna lead us in this song as we kind of start to draw things to a close. I raise a hallelujah. If you're brave enough to stand and sing along, do that. Um, uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful song. It's a declaration. We will continue to praise God in the face of all that uh, is happening in our world at this time. So we raise a hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that we have this hope that doesn't depend on our circumstances and that you are still God in the good times and in the bad times and that you are still worthy of our praise no matter what we face. i 
It's been so good this morning, hasn't it, to raise a hallelujah, to bring our praises to the Good Shepherd and to know his touch uh, uh, upon us. I encourage you just, just to keep meditating on this, this, this psalm through, through the days ahead. And then if you want to come and share on, on, on Wednesday evening, do that, 7.30. So we're going we're gonna to wrap things up now. Um, give us five or ten minutes and we'll get, we'll get the Zoom coffee up and running. Uh, if you want to join us, grab a coffee, come down. It'd be nice to have a chat and uh, see a few faces after our small, this after this morning's live stream. So don't forget that. Then also, if, you, if you're looking on uh, and you you know you're not usually part of this church family, you want to find out a little bit more about us. Thursday evening, six till six thirty, and again the, the 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 details will be on on the screen. Okay, and again, don't forget tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, just for an hour, just a sort of bit of a church family get together and just an update. So bless you all. Hope you have a fantastic week and uh, see you all next week.